So, so this is probably a question you get a lot, but what kind of led to you writing the barbell prescription? Like, what was the process? You know, like, how did you get in touch with, like, Mark Ripito? And how did you... Because I first heard about the book. I was on, like, the Starting Strength website. And, like, it was probably fairly recent after it was published. It was probably, like, 2016 or 2017. I, just, I, mm -hmm. I had bought Practical Programming and Starting Strength. And I saw, like, this other one. I was, like, barbell prescription. And I had long since wanted to get my mom to, and my parents to start lifting and stuff. And I eventually ended up buying it for them down the road. But I, I was I was like, oh, the barbell prescription, what's that? And that's how I found it. But how did you get into that whole world? So, yeah, it, it, I've told this story a lot, but I'm always happy to tell it again. It's kind of fun. Um, so when I, when I graduated from my residency in emergency medicine, uh, in my last year of emergency medicine residency, I... I needed to fulfill a research requirement. Everybody had a research elective that they had to complete. And I did mine by going across the street and working in the lab of Dr. Blaine White. He was an emergency doctor, but he was kind of an oddity at the time. He was an emergency doctor that did uh, basic science research. He did bench research and his area of focus was on brain damage after cardiac arrest, which is a big problem in emergency medicine. And I discovered I was just trying to like do a vacation rotation and check the box and get my research requirement out of the way. But I discovered that I was very intrigued by the research that he was doing there. It was really cool. What I always tell people is that that research was about what happens when the most complex object in the known universe gets sick and what we might be able to do to fix it. And it pretty cool problem and pretty central to emergency medicine. Anyway, I got into that and I decided to do a fellowship after my residency and I did a basic research fellowship and I did a PhD in neurophysiology to go along with it. And that's how I got my PhD in addition to my MD. And after I finished the fellowship, I got an NIH grant and I continued to be a researcher in this field for about 10, 12 years and, you know, published papers and went to conferences and you know i was never in any danger of winning a nobel prize or anything like that but i got to do some pretty hardcore research uh, mostly at the protein level growth factor signaling stuff like that and so my research revolved heavily around the use of growth factors for the repair of brain damage after cardiac arrest we were investigating how that might work and so I was always reading up on growth factors like insulin and brain derived neurotrophic factor and human growth hormone and things like that. And one day I'm searching the literature and I encountered this paper, a type of paper that I later came to call a bro bar blood study where they took a bunch of bros and they had them squat and then they drew their blood and they looked at the level of growth factors. And I think it was insulin like growth factor in their blood. And, um, it was pretty intriguing. What they found was that these guys had uh, huge levels of growth factors in their blood after they did squats. And I found that very intriguing because growth factors are good for your brain. And then uh, I w at the same time, I was interested in training for myself because I was kind of a cardio bunny, martial artist, kind of aerobic kind of guy up until that point. I had a bow flex and I, you know, did crazy stuff on it and stuff like that. But I was aware that I was losing muscle. I was getting into my, you know, my late forties by this time. And I started looking for things to do about that. And I found that it was kind of all connected. And so I started looking for some guidance in how to do strength training for increased muscle growth. And Long story short, I eventually Ripito eventually came to my attention and I got his book. And like I always tell people, I was about three pages in before I realized, okay, this guy, this guy is a deep thinker. And um, I know Ripito is, you know, a character and people have a lot of different feelings about him. But I, you know, one thing is for sure. This guy has thought more deeply about strength training than anybody else. He is the great systematizer right he he took a lot of experience and a lot of accumulated wisdom and 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 developed a system a systematic way of thinking about strength training and, 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 and then I, he did it for a set of five 
Yeah, and then eat a first <laughs> set of five. That's right. Um, and so I, I just ate that book right up, and it immediately just changed the way I thought about exercise. And because I was a scientist and a physician, I, you know, I started thinking about it in lots of other ways besides just how it applied to me. And I, uh, I started wondering what was known about the topic from a biomedical point of view. And I just discovered this whole world of literature, most of it not very good, but it slowly became clear to me that this sort of training for muscle and strength needed to be the keystone of any exercise prescription for an older adult. And Ripito asked me to write an article for the Starting Trick website way back in the day. And I wrote a, an article called Barbell Training is Big Medicine. And that seemed to be a somewhat influential article. A lot of people have read it. And eventually that grew into the book, The Barbell Prescription. Rip and I published that book on a handshake. Uh, I it's I'm at pains to point out that Andy Baker co-wrote that book with me. He is um, an incredibly masterful coach when it comes to working with older athletes. And um, he provided most of the material that became the programming section of that book. And I'm very proud to have co-authored it with him and to have had it published uh, by Ripito and the Asgard company. And that's how it all happened. Uh, and in due course, I opened my own training practice, my own strength and conditioning clinic. And it's what I do full time now. I've been retired from emergency medicine for about two and a half, three years now. It's funny. I always tell people, like, I, I literally say, buy this book for your mom. Because that's I bought the book for my mom. <laughs> and, and that's what I tell when I, I recommend your book. And then for other people, like even like I have some clients who are in their like 40s and 50s. You know, I try and impart this wisdom on them, but they have a ton, a bunch of friends. And I don't have the credentials always to like have them take me seriously. Because <laughs> they're like, oh, mm -hmm. my doctor told me I shouldn't deadlift. And if I say I don't have a level of authority that their doctor does, but if I can like point to other people who have, you know, because people have this crazy like appeal to authority logical fallacy stuck in their mind that, you know, this person has a higher credential, so they must always be right. Right. So it's good that when you, there's people who are qual who have high level credential, high level qualification promoting this type of thing. I just think that's the best thing in the world. Well, uh, thank you. I understand what you're saying about the appeal to authority. We try to appeal to, you know, physiological and biomedical rationale and to just literally a mountain of biomedical data, um, taken piece by piece, a lot of that data is not particularly robust, but if you look at it uh, in aggregate and at it as a body of literature, it's pretty clear that this kind of training is what people need after 40. It needs to be the centerpiece, not cardio, uh, you know, not mobility, what, you know, all this other weird stuff that people do. It needs to be training for strength and it has to be done safely and rationally and effectively and with a view to what it is that we're trying to accomplish. That's the other thing. People tend to associate strength training with, you know, big muscles and looking good with your shirt off and, you know, being hot and ripped and jacked and tanned and all of that. And that is that's absolutely not what we're trying to achieve at all. We're not interested in the cosmetic implications of what we're trying to do. You know, a, a 70 year old lady, she's, you know, she's a little bit past that. She doesn't care about that. Of course, everyone wants to look healthy and vibrant and alive and it will do that for you. But what we're interested in is not the cosmetics of it. What we're interested in is help people live healthier, more vibrant, fuller lives with broader horizons. And, and that's, that's exactly what we do. And so all of that, all of that involves sort of a changing of the paradigm of the way people think about exercise in general and strength training in particular. And that's, that's basically my life's work at this point is getting people to understand um, the why and the how and the what of, of strength training for healthy aging.